John, we're at day two of Expo 2021. Uh, it's obvious that uh, the folks who can be here are here and the rest are <laughs> somewhere waiting for permission. Sure. But we're so glad to see you here. And more important, we saw a press release this morning that really got our attention. You have placed, for the first time, a vehicle with a Lee County Sheriff. And as I understand it, this is kind of a whole pioneering effort on your part. Tell us all about it. The big part is always trying to get drone programs moving in a direction. Lee County has done a tremendous job getting their program moving. What we offered was a different type of vehicle to do a new type of mission. And that mission is very specific on how it is handled with the Dragonfish, much more different than any of the other types of drones that are out there. They went ahead and took possession of this just a few weeks ago. So they haven't been deploying it for very long. However, it's been obviously making waves on how it's being perceived, how they're actually flying it, how well it actually does, and the performance of it. How do you train a law enforcement organization to depart from what they know to something that's, frankly, altogether different? Well, we're just talking about a new vehicle, right? Even though the principles of flying, the regulations of flying, the rules of engagement have not changed, that all has to stay the same. However, we do have a new vehicle. If it's new, well, we're going to have to go out there and train, learn how to use that and engage the way it should be properly and make sure we know both limitations of us as pilots and our equipment. So even though we can bring it out and say, hey, this will do everything, no, it, it's not really made to do all of the other things. You don't compare a Jeep to a Ferrari. They are totally different things. And that is very true with the Dragonfish. We can do certain things that no other drones can do, at least at the price point. And I think that is an agreeable thing right now, is trying to get a manageable price point for something that actually does act the way this one does and can do the things it does. So what kind of reception did you get from the people you were training to f deploy and fly Dragonfish? Holy cow. <laughs> Every person does. Even I did when I first seen it. I have certainly tested a number of VTOL. Some of those challenges, just because of the shape of it, we have a tail, we have wings. Wind is a really big challenge. And we've got windy places all over the place. So how do we really mitigate having an issue trying to take off or land when it's truly windy? The way it's designed definitely handles that very well. So when people see that performance, it's a holy cow moment. Additionally, you're not just flying it and pointing a camera. The camera is interactive with the airframe and how it handles and navigates the airspace. So when you touch on a space on the screen, it implies I need to go there or be watching the subject that's there. When you really are like, hey, I want to go there and it actually moves and, and tries to manage itself to get there and stay in the air aloft an hour and a half to two hours, it's impressive. It's very impressive. John McBride, uh, Director of Training for Autel Robotics, thank you so much for joining us on Aero News absolutely. and Airborne Unman. Thanks, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com.